a guy comes along up from uh, Montana, uh, and uh, there's no permit needed for maybe for the septic system up there, and we just put in a conventional septic system in addition to ours and let them slide. Um, he didn't need a building permit. And uh, so he came through, and I think within four months he had a house. <laughs> because the design didn't need to be customized or designed. We used a generic design, modified the drawings to his needs, uh, and there are certain things you can modify and certain things you can't. And he had a house. And we're like, whoa, look at this compared to Pima County, Arizona. Look at this compared to Florida. This is incredible. These people worked for two years to get a permit to build a three times as expensive home as they originally wanted to, and these guys came through and got a home in four, week, uh, four months design, draw, build, all done. Uh, they're living in it. And of course, we're uh, tuning it up into Montana severeness. And uh, then another one, uh, we, we've done one here in our community and we've evolved it. And of course, we fought for a pocket of freedom here in our community for 10 years, and I guess you'd have to call this a pocket of freedom. But during the course of that project, we kind of determined, wait, wait a second, this place, it's kind of like a pocket of freedom where you, you're free to do something. And we said, well, wait a second, maybe there's other places around the planet, around the country like this. And yes, there are. And another guy comes along, same story. An older guy again, and uh, has 350 grand in his pocket, and uh, wants to cut loose from his business in the city. Uh, Crockett, Texas, no permits needed. Uh, three and a half, four months later, he's in his home, you know. Uh, a couple of new issues there, but it's still the same global model Earthship. Uh, and it's in not a severe hot climate, but a severe wet climate. And that causes us to see that the, see when we get to build these in four months, we all learn from these different climates. And both buildings are, are fine. We're, we're learning fine tuning uh, aspects of them. And here comes another one. Uh, uh, Baja, Mexico is the same story. Uh, uh, down at the tip of the Baja Peninsula, it's Mexico. No permit was needed. Uh, they had that, a permit was actually needed, but it's pretty low tech permit, and they're going through some paperwork after the fact. The building is built, everything's functioning. That was another four month process. So, what we're seeing here is a four month process to give you a sustainable home. Now, that is remarkable. Uh, because it, 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 it capitalizes on four decades of work because, I mean, some architects that have not, not really devoted their life to it, it could take them a year to design a sustainable home, and even then it would be the first time out, and it would have a lot of bugs. We've still got minor bugs on a, on a, on a concept we've been working on for 40 years. So we're talking about a learning curve here to make carbon zero housing. And every aspect of law and politics should, should be sympathetic to that learning curve and, and encourage it rather than discourage it. Right now, to, due to no fault of any one person or, or group of politicians, our country or anything, our state, the, the, the uh, evolution, the uh, emergence of sustainable green carbon zero housing is... Uh, inhibited, totally inhibited. It's like a noose around your neck if you try to do it. Uh, it's difficult. But the pockets of freedom are not. So my, one of my first suggestions is if you're, you know, sitting in front of your computer and you're, you're thinking about a new home for your family and you haven't bought land yet, then to check out this concept because uh, your, your land would be out a little further from the city, but a lot of people do internet work these days, online businesses and whatever, and even a commute is not as bad as waiting two years to get a permit and making the building cost, you know, 800 grand rather than three. Um, so if you haven't bought land yet, one of the aspects to starting this whole process is find land and that's in a pocket of freedom. And the way you do that is you take your state and you, that you want to be in and you look around to uh, areas, counties, pick some counties that are not, uh, that don't have a major city in them. And if they're, you know, 45 minutes from a city, great. Check out the building permit office 
uh, check out the uh, the permit situation, and uh, you'll find that some counties in almost every state require a septic permit. You know, and that's about it. You know, some states are going to get crazy and are crazy, and you just want to. My advice is just stay away from it. You know, uh, it's it's it's. Some states are in, in counties are really making a big play of we are now really encouraging green development. Here is our 42 page permit application. Oh, you know, you don't want to go there. Uh, it's counties that basically don't have that in line yet. I mean, that's the way New Mexico was when I first came here 40 years ago. That's why I was able to make so much headway until the rules and regulations like some kind of a wall closed in and not only stopped me, took me backwards for a decade. And, um, but there are still counties out there that don't require that. And so what I'm saying is, we're playing it from both ends here. We're suggesting that people locate these pockets of freedom and all you do is call your county anonymously and just say, you know, I'm thinking of building a home in your county. What is required for a building permit? And if they say, well, you just need a septic permit, you're in, you're in. Then your next step with that is land is really cheap where there are no utilities and where, per, where you know where you're going to get way cheaper land and you're going to not be hassled with a serious permit thing and uh, you're you're miles ahead right there and that can justify you know you if you're 45 minutes from town and you work in the city then okay get yourself a a a, a vehicle that runs on efficient fuel or a prius type situation or a uh, uh, you know, what I've done is uh, I've gotten a, uh, my, my offices, our community that I work in here is, you know, 25 miles, I think, from my house, if not more, 30 maybe. I got an old 76 uh, Mercedes and I just run it on straight grease, you know, uh, so I don't care how long I drive. It smells good, makes me hungry on the way to work. But, uh, so anyway, getting around the, because that's the first thing people will say to you. What about the commute? That's uh, energy inefficient. Uh, well, you need a home. And getting away from the cities is not a bad idea anyway, because they're going to be chaos as, as things get worse. You're going to be out there growing tomatoes and bananas and uh, not caring what happens to the economy or the uh, utility systems and so on. So it's, uh, it's, it's definitely the approach I would recommend. Hey, if... Paula um, Allen from Waco, Texas asked... Got a question here. Yeah, Paula Allen asked, um, how do airships stand up to natural disasters as compared to conventional housing? Okay, that's uh, uh, not exactly on the topic, but I may yeah. as well answer it. Um, we got a question from Waco, Texas. Uh, how do airships stand up to natural disasters? Um, well, they really... Uh, the, the short answer to that is better than any other form of building. The reason is they've got their own power, water, and sewage. If you've got a fancy home and there's a flood or a tornado, all the power goes out. Your toilet won't even flush. You know, even if your home didn't get blown away by the tornado, you can't use it because there's no power, water, or sewage. Because sewage is even relevant to electricity. So there's the utilities of your home for sure would be more uh, uh, secure than public utilities in a, in a scenario like a disaster. But then look at earthquake and, and, and tornadoes and things like that anyway. Uh, the homes, these homes are buried on three sides. And so there's nothing but a front face. And if you are in Tornado Alley, then you would, we would, uh, we would uh, sort of put a little extra effort into the engineering of the front face. But other than that, you got power, water, sewage, and a home that can't possibly blow away. Yeah, maybe you're going to break out a few pieces of glass. Uh, but the home can't blow away and be destroyed.